Hello, we're having a look at inverse variation in this video. Inverse variation, it's uh, describing a relationship between two variables whereby as one variable increases, the other one decreases. This is one version. And an example of that is if, you, if your driving speed increases, if you drive faster, the time it takes for you to get to your journey actually decreases. So your speed might increase, but the time it takes decreases. So when one thing's going up and the other thing's going down, it's an inverse variation relationship between these two things. Or we could have one thing going down, one variable decreasing and the other variable increasing. And a cheeky example from a parent's perspective here is as the number of children still living at home decreases, as in more of the children leaving home, or so as the number of children still living at home decreases, the hours of spare time for their parents might increase. So um, yeah reflects my stage of life I think. Inverse variation, there are different ways to describe an inverse variation just according to the language of the question. So uh, letters are once again used to represent the two variables just like in the direct variation video. Uh, we can say A varies inversely as B. We can say it varies indirectly with B. Or we can say that A is inversely proportional to B. So that's three different ways of saying that we have an inverse variation between two items here. We, the letter K is used to describe the relationship between the two variables. It's like the number link between the two ideas, but it's used in a slightly different way than the direct variation way it's used. Uh, it's called the constant of variation, so it's the number that is um, describing the relationship between the two variables. The inverse basic formula uh, is A varies inversely as B, then A equals K on B. Now the direct variation question, you'll remember, had A equals KB. But that's for direct variation questions. This is the basic layout of the basic formula for inverse variation. Uh, once again though we can have the square of B or the cube of B and that sort of thing and we need to adjust there. The K is always on top and the B or the B squared or the B cubed is on the bottom. So that's how we set up the question for inverse variation questions. Let's have a look at a basic example here. Y varies inversely as X. If uh, Y equals 16 when X equals 3, find Y when X equals 12. Okay, the steps involved, assign a letter to each variable. We're not going to be using that one because they've already given us X's and Y's to use. In the next example we'll use it, so uh, we'll show how that happens then. Write the basic formula, Y equals K on X, and we're going to actually steal that basic formula because we have Y's and X's in this question. So that's written out there. Now just in, as in the direct variation steps, we have to then sub in the pair of values. Now look in the first two numbers that are given in the question are your pair of values and they kind of uh, kind of mentioned in the same breath as each other if y equals 16 when x equals 3 then you can pause find y when x equals 12 so that's our that's our third value we're going to sub in later on but this is definitely related these two you can tell because you can hear yourself read the question i suppose we're going to sub those values in straight underneath the direct variation uh, basic formula I've put a 16 under the y because y equals 16. I've put a, a 3 in, um, in where the x should go, underneath the k there. Now this time to, um, to get k on its own, I will be trying to get rid of a 3 that's dividing. So I'm going to be multiplying by 3 on that side and multiplying by 3 on that side as well. So we do something slightly different only because we're solving the equation that is a different equation. It's still a one-step equation. We'll multiply the right hand, the left hand side by 3 and the right hand side by 3. And a 3 that's dividing and a 3 that's multiplying will cancel each other out leaving us with k on its own and 16 times 3 is on the left there. So we'll get k equals 48. So when we say solve, we want the letter to be on its own when we solve an equation. And so k equals 48. Now just as in the direct variation steps, we want to then take that k and improve the formula. By putting that 48 where the k was in that basic formula. So that has come down here and been improved by the fact that we've replaced that k that we didn't know before with the 48 that we now know. 
Our last step is to sub in that third value. You can see that the last number mentioned off to the side there was x equals 12. So we're going to replace the x with a 12 and find out what y is like the question asked us to. 48 divided by 12 is 4. And then we have it. We found y when x equals 12. So other than the basic formula for inverse variation being a little different with the k on top and the x on the bottom, we're still subbing in the pair of values, we're still solving to get k on its own, we're still improving the formula and we're still finding that third value to sub in to get our answer. So uh, if I was to say direct variation is extremely close to inverse variation in the way that we do it, yes, but watch out for those two differences, a different basic formula, and I guess we're solving this to get k on its own a little differently, but that's, not, that's just an algebra type equations decision, not so much built into the method here. All right, now, here we've got a question that goes from the very start. It doesn't look like an inverse variation question, but it does say this phrase here, inversely proportional. So um, we're going to have to use this, um, these steps. Can't just uh, muck around with numbers on our calculator and try and sort it out. If it, uh, the time it takes to pack a truck, a removal truck, if someone's moving house or whatever, is inversely proportional to the number of people packing it. I'm not sure if you've thought about this before, but if you've got only um, five people packing a truck, it might take them four hours. But if you've got eight people, would you expect that to be quicker? If they don't get in each other's way, I think, yes, uh, eight people should be able to pack the truck. Um, ready for the move in less time than four hours so we're expecting an answer less than four hours if we uh, if we're doing this right because more people helping should uh, should help all right now we need to assign a letter to each variable and hallelujah after uh, three or four examples that didn't have to use this we're going to use this now um, so here we've got the two variables we've got people number of people packing the truck and how long it's taking them so we're going to say how long it's taking them, time, we're going to give that the letter T. And the number of people helping, we're going to say N for number. We could say P for people if we like, no big deal there. So we're going to use T and N. Now, we have a basic formula of Y equals K on X, but we have a decision here. We could have T equals N over, uh, sorry, K over N. Or we could have n equals k over t. Now we got we are guided by having a look at the question and figuring out whether we are working out to find time, or our final answer will be in number of people. And if I have a look carefully at the question, the question is going to have a final answer of how long would it take. So can you see that I am trying to find out? time in the end so I want that to be the subject of the formula so I'm going to write out t equals k over n as my choice of uh, my version of the basic formula because I looked ahead head to the rest of the question and it's t that I'm trying to find out in the end so that's my decision thinking process there so t equals k on n right so the next step is to find a sub in the pair of values now it's not that hard to see that these are grouped together here, four, five people in four hours. So I'm going to use that as my pair of values. I'm going to put the four where the t is because that's how my, what time was mentioned in my pair of values there. And I'm going to put five where the n for the number of people is under there. So sub in the pair of values there that's mentioned. And to get that on its own, to solve the equation here, I, I would need to multiply both sides by five. On the right hand side it will cancel out nicely, a 5 that's dividing and a 5 that's multiplying will cancel out. Left hand side 4 times 5 is 20 and when we put k out the front of that we swap those uh, sides there, k equals 20. And we've found the value of k now by subbing in that pair of values. Let's improve the formula. So instead of t equals k on n and not knowing much here, we now know the value of k is 20 so he's going to be replacing that k and we've got a much improved basic formula here once we get to this stage we could sub in any numbers of people helping to pack the truck and find out the time it takes or really we could sub in the number of uh, the number of hours it takes the time it takes them and figure out how many people must have been helping uh, that would take us a, bit, a little bit more of a switch around but still still be possible 
So the last bit is to sub the third value in. The last uh, value mentioned is 8 people. Now that's uh, n for number of people. So we're going to put an 8 where the n is. So we're going to put an 8 in there. And t is going to equal 20 over 8. How many times does 8 go into 20? Two and a half times. So that indicates, now t was for time, so that indicates that uh, it would take 8 people two and a half hours or yeah, 2 hours 30 minutes, that's 2.5 hours, isn't it? 2.5, remember these are hours, so it's 2 hours 30 minutes or 2.5 hours to pack the truck. Now that's exactly what we're expecting, or roundabout what we're expecting. If 5 people take 4 hours to pack the truck, then 8 people take a fair bit shorter time to pack the same truck. There's lots more people helping, many hands make light work. So I, I like that uh, example, it takes algebra and uh, and variation type steps here and it sorts out a real world problem you know if uh, if you needed the if needed to get the removalist truck back in a short amount of time because you didn't want to didn't have much in your budget for moving from one house to another then you might have to uh, make more friends uh, and invite them to help preferably strong people alrighty so let's recap inverse variation involves one thing going up and the other thing going down or the first thing going down and the other thing going up um, so they're kind of opposite uh, directions, whereas direct variation, they're both going in the same direction, either both up or both down. Uh, the inverse variation basic formulas has k on the top instead of k beside the, uh, the b. Um, so the y version would be y equals k on x. That's in a lot of questions as a basic uh, inverse variation formula, but I've got b's instead. There's still going to be squares and cubes and stuff you'd have to watch out for, so read the question nice and carefully. And uh, I'm hoping you've got the uh, got the hang of the steps that we take. We assign a letter to each variable, and at last we saw an example that we had to do that. N for people, N for number of people, and T for the amount of time we take in that previous example. Basic formulas like that, but watch out for the variations with the squares and the cubes. Sub in the pair of values that we find, and you'll find if you read the question carefully, there'll be a pair of numbers mentioned in the same breath. Solve the equation to find k on its own, then we write the improved basic formula, and then any values we sub in we can find uh, our final answer from that. Alright, now it's good to talk through that. I'm hoping that uh, wasn't too long and boring for you, but uh, yeah, follow those steps and I'm sure you'll have plenty of success there. Thanks so much for listening. PeterBlakeMath.com. All the best with your studies.